Okay, get started there. Yeah. So thank you again uh, for the invitation. It's very nice to be here uh, to present these results. I will talk about future circular colliders as I was asked, <clears throat> mainly on FCC and CPC. And I thank, of course, uh, my collaborators from FCC and CPC for to show this material. Uh, I will just uh, show things on the FCC feasibility study and the progress on CPC and uh, the circular phys uh, collider physics potential, mainly on Higgs and electroweak. But of course, uh, I will first give a, an, a general introduction of the strategy which is going on because there was not so much discussed so far. So, uh, of course, why do we need a, a circular collider? I mean, a, a future collider. We know we have these big questions, and some of these questions can be addressed uh, at uh, at a future machine. In fact, uh, we really want to understand better the, the Higgs boson, the Higgs field. And for that, there is the only way we know is to indeed uh, build a, a higher machine because a higher energy machine, because we know that at the end of the HL LHC, we will not know <coughs> uh, all what we want to know on the Higgs by far. For instance, the self coupling will barely be touched. And so this definitely, there is a need for, for a new machine. Now, in terms of machines, uh, we, we there are, several options. We just heard about muon colliders. Uh, there have been options of uh, E plus C minus colliders, either linear or circular. And then there are also gamma gamma factories. I will, I will not talk about that. So all these X factories, why uh, we should go for one type or another, I will try to convince you why circular colliders are indeed the best options uh, for the future. And in fact, it's, uh, it's uh, rather th simple to understand. In fact, uh, we want at the same time to best uh, to study uh, as well as we can the Higgs and to go beyond the standard model. And okay, the, the, the standard approach for that is <clears throat> either you try to measure deviation from precise prediction, for instance, on the Higgs or the electric weak couplings, or you try to observe new phenomena like neutrino oscillation, CPA violation in the past, but we want to, to look for new, new phenomena of this, of this kind or by direct observation of new particles, then we, you need to reach some high energy frontier. However, we don't have the natural energy scale to search for this. We know not. Uh, we, we have found the Higgs. We don't know exactly where is the next scale. So we, we, we don't know exactly where, it, where to, to look for, but we have one thing to study at 125 GV, of course. And another thing is to go as wide, as broad, as powerful as possible. So we need this, a machine which is very sensitive, very precise and which can be upgradable in energy. And so the circular machines have these capabilities because they can do in, in two phases. You can do a phase with the plus C minus in which you would go for the precision, the intensity, uh, and, and then you can also move to PP and, uh, and then have the very high energy frontier. And so it's very versatile machine and it's pretty powerful from this point of view. So now regarding the uh, linear collider, you can see the program that you can do here at circular collider. So the program at, at circular collider, you have the machine, you have either you go to the, the ZH energy and you do the Higgs physics, or you go, you can upgrade the energy up to about 350 GV at the TT bar threshold, and you can do all the top physics, which is of course also crucial. Uh, with a circular collider in E plus C minus, you're limited to about this energy. So this is a bit unfortunate, but is pretty sufficient because then you will have the, the high energy step. But what you have also at circular collider is this intensity frontier. So namely, if you go to the to the Z pole, then you can produce uh, 10 to the more than 10 to the 12 uh, Z and more than 10 to the 8 uh, WW. And so you have a huge uh, program of electroweak and QCD uh, flavor factory with tau physics and B physics. And you can also make direct searches of light uh, new physics. And so this part is really uh, very superior by three orders of magnitude from what can be achieved at the linear collider. So it would be a very, uh, I mean, difficult to, to, I mean, if we would not study that, of course, if the new, uh, the, the new physics is somewhere hidden here in this part, you would miss it. So it would be a bit, uh, it would not be, uh, not be very clever. And on top of that, of course, if you do a linear collider machine, then you need to build a high energy frontier machine later on. So while right here you have already the same tunnel that could be reused. And, uh, and that's the point. I mean, uh, what I was just saying that the, the future, the, the stage two that I will not discuss here, 
uh, is the is the HH machine, and this, we know that such a machine has has a very high potential because you can uh, measure the Higgs self-coupling at the three to five percent level. So you are really in an interesting regime. You have the highest switch in sensitivity for the Higgs studies for dark matter searches and more. And you have also a new heavy particle which could be directly discovered for masses up to twenty to forty TV, uh, depending on the on the on the beast that you are looking at. You have a potential for indirect searches, and you have also the possibility, as uh, Jürgen not mentioned yesterday, to do a EH machine, which has also addresses couplings in the different, I mean, Higgs couplings in different ways and other physics or exotics like leptoquarks and so on. But uh, but so there is another possibility here, and you have the possibility of injecting also heavy ion and so have a heavy ion program. So this is a very uh, broad machine, which really is interesting for all uh, HEP uh, communities. Note that they are not ready yet to build this HH machine because some people would like to go directly to the highest energy frontier, but we are not ready in terms of, uh, of uh, the magnets are not ready as, you, as we know. And, uh, and the, the, to reach the, this, uh, so this will not be done for the moment, and to reach the, this high energy frontier with a muon collider, I mean, we don't know yet. I mean, we heard about the talk, but uh, we don't know exactly if it will ever happen, but we will see. Uh, in any case, uh, following all this discussion, uh, this discussion is in fact the summary of, of the European strategy uh, which came to the recommendations, uh, which were done that Europe, together with its international partner, and this was really underlined, should investigate this technical and financial feasibility of a future hadron collider with at least 100 TV in the center of mass, but with an electron positron Higgs and electric factory as a possible first stage. And again, there was insisting that such a feasibility study should be established as a global endeavor and be completed on the timescale of the next strategy update, which is 2026. So that's why it's very important that indeed we all get together. And for that, it's an invitation to the Indian community to join this program uh, as soon as possible, uh, because it's, uh, it's really coming soon. Yeah. And so uh, there are two things which have been set up. There has been uh, uh, initiatives from ECFA, which have set up working groups and workshops to, to have all the communities working on X-Factory working together and this FCC feasibility study that I will, I will detail a bit more. So for the ECFA uh, workshop, I mean, you, I can address you to these uh, uh, results, which have been shown in October 5 to 7. There were plenty of, of, uh, of presentation. You can go and check. But this is the idea to bring together the entire E plus C minus X factory uh, effort together. And so this means, in particular, uh, all the people who are working on the linear collider uh, could also get closer to this uh, to this effort, and this will eventually lead to a, a full ECFA report, which should be submitted to the European Strategy. And uh, this report should focus on, on new work and emphasize what is added. What can the ECFA X factory study add beyond what uh, we are, we are at, at the moment, and what will the X factory add beyond the state of the art at the end of uh, HLLHC? At the same time, as you know, there has been the snow mass effort, which just concluded last summer. And so these are some informal conclusion uh, from uh, the studies. I mean, the, the formal conclusions will come with the deliberation of P5, the P5 committee, which will take place in a few months. But basically what came out of it was that the snow mass process was very productive despite COVID. Uh, the continuation of what was decided in 2014 is assured. So for instance, Dune will be pursued, although I mean, it's a complicated uh, project and it's a, it gets a bit post, more costly than what it was. But regarding what we are interested in here, the Higgs factor is considered as the next preferred option for the energy frontier co co collider. Note that, however, uh, there were many options which were presented. Uh, so FCCE was uh, discussed, of course, heavily, but there were many new uh, ideas which came up. And so it's it, it was, in, in the sense, they don't expect a decision from P5 about the next six February now, uh, which is not so good for us. I mean, I mean, for FCC, let's say, because we would prefer that people converge faster to some extent. However, they also added that if indeed CERN will decide to build uh, FCC, US will participate and contribute. So let's move on now to the FCC uh, integrated program. So uh, the stage one. The EE phase uh, with the, the four uh, running uh, energies and the HH uh, with the 100 TV uh, energy frontier that we will not discuss here. 
So again, uh, we are here. We have found a place. I will show you uh, where it will be located. Where will be this stage one? This stage one will extend typically uh, from 2045 to 2060 for a few, about 15 years of running time. Then there will be some time to install uh, the new magnets for the PP machine, and then the, the second part of the of the run will be on 25 years, starting around 2065 or 20, 2070. So uh, the nice thing, of course, of such a project is that you have uh, you have a common civil engineering and technical infrastructure which will be reused, and and all the certain existing infrastructure as well. So the the, the program makes uh, makes sense and can be carried out uh, while uh, HLLC is being completed. Now there has been uh, progress. Uh, there was an extensive placement review. And among the hundreds of choices of uh, positioning which have been studied, uh, this site has been has been chosen. It's a it's a placement which has eight sites for a technical and for experimental. So potentially there is place for four experiments uh, for detectors. Uh, we have eight sites initially. There were twelve sites, and so they, that's this mixed uh, less use of land. Uh, there is a vicinity of uh, several sites to the four hundred kilo grid lines, which are useful, of course, because it's a very, I mean, it consumes energy, such a, such a machine. And there is good road connection, also close to ANSI, where there is a, a big lab, a French lab. So there will be another pole across, across the ring from, from CERN. And at the moment, there are exchanges with the 40 local uh, towns uh, from which the, the ring goes through in order to, to make sure that, um, that everybody agrees with such a project. So there has been updated parameters uh, because the, 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 of course the ring has slightly changed. In red are the updated parameters. I will of course not go through all these numbers, uh, but the, the point which is interesting to note is still that the total integrated luminosity per year uh, in terms of uh, atobar per year, so it's three and a half uh, atobar per year. While you uh, initially the project out of uh, three years of running was bringing up to five in, uh, universal atobar. So already here in one year, we get to 3.5. So it's already gain. We have a, about a gain of more than factor two. And so it means that what I will show you in terms of physics will be even, even better uh, with, uh, with uh, the, the machine as it is. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Now there is a difficult point here. It's a problem of the cost. The cost is uh, has been estimated, and it's uh, it's pretty heavy, of course. I mean, it's heavy uh, when you consider the whole project, because what costs a lot is the civil engineering associated to the tunnel, which is at the level of uh, five uh, and something billions of uh, of uh, Swiss francs or dollars or euro or, or euros typically. And uh, and then and then the machine itself and the accelerator complex and the, and the detector are about the same amount on, on, on the other. So, so altogether, you are talking about, about 10 billion, 10 and a half billions plus another billions for uh, the TT bar extension, which gives you a lots of possibilities in terms of physics. So it's indeed part of the program. So at the end of the day, probably half of it can be taken uh, by the CERN uh, recurrent budget, but there is a special contribution which to be found at the level of 5 billion. And so there is, all the act, I mean, all the, the financial feasibility study during these five years is indeed to try to find uh, this additional money in order to, to be able to get started after the, the next strategy. And if you look at the cost of the FCCHH, you realize, okay, this is also a costly machine, but you realize that if you would not do the FCCE, you would save only 10% of the total cost of the machine. So it would be really not worth doing it because, uh, of course, uh, the, the FCC program is, has a lots of uh, potential. Now moving to the CPC. So CPC is uh, similar uh, from seen from, from far away. I mean, in the sense that it is also a 100 kilometer ring. Uh, and uh, it does also the project to have an upgraded proton-proton uh, machine at the 100 TV uh, level. So it's let's say it's close. It, it started with lower luminosity, but with changes on paper, they are uh, approaching the, 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 the same uh, luminosities that what has been achieved at FCC. 
There are several sites which are available. There is no decision yet on the site, although some are, are, are more favorable than others. And the idea is uh, very ambitious in the timing because the, the proposed uh, initial uh, start of the construction will be 2026 and try to deliver Higgs by mid-2030. So is this realistic or not? Uh, it's not so easy to judge, but indeed there is lots of progress which is uh, being carried out at the moment. And uh, the program, the operation mode, is a bit different in, in the order of uh, the, how the, the energies of the center of mass will be scanned, but otherwise it's rather similar uh, trying to reach uh, a high luminosity in the ZH, uh, also high luminosity at the Z, WW, and then TT bar. It's a bit lower than FCC for the moment, but maybe there will be some progress in the future. So the comparison of the FCC to CPC parameters, okay, we will not go through all these numbers. The red numbers are for FCC. The, the green numbers are for CPC. So again, uh, if you will take the time to go through that after the slides, you see that the parameters are rather similar. And if you, again, if you concentrate on the LUMI, you see that, for instance, at the Z, the LUMI per interaction point in the units of 10 to the 34 is 182 versus 115 for the Z. And uh, for the for the Higgs is 7.3 versus 5. So it's it's not an order of magnitude difference. It's, it's rather close. So in the future, when we talk about the physics program, you can see that uh, most of the things can be done would could be done about in the same way, except maybe for the where the, the highest luminosity is required, which is the 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 S resonance that I will discuss at some point. Okay, future circular collider study. This is to provide by 2025 uh, for for the European strategy uh, the results of this uh, of this uh, these different um, uh, different points. So what I, what is interesting is that there is already a midterm review and cost review uh, next uh, fall, and so this uh, put us really uh, a, a big pressure. So there are uh, different places which we were things will be reviewed infrastructure and placement technical infrastructure organization and financing environmental impacts and socioeconomic impact so i will not discuss these aspects here but there will be also accelerator design for fcce and fcchh and physics experiments and detectors so these are the places also where we would like all the communities to contribute so for the uh, FCC, uh, the accelerator, there will be the, the, lay, the overall layout with injector should be kind of finalized. I mean, in, a, in, a, in the impact of the operation sec sequence should may also be uh, revisited to see if you would start maybe with the ZH. At the moment, we start with the Z. Uh, comparisons uh, of the SPS as a pre-booster with a 10 to 20 GV LINAC. These are two options which are possible. Uh, key technology and status of technology are the program and the overall layout for FCCHH and for the injection lines from LHC and the SCSPS. For the physics experiments and detector, we will need to document in detail the FCCE and FCCHH physics cases with updated numbers, plans for improved theoretical calculations because these are crucial uh, in order to uh, benefit from uh, the high, very high statistics that we get at this machine and the first documentation of the main detector requirements to fully exploit the FCC physics opportunities. So there is a program which is really urgent, and so it's important to join uh, this effort as soon as possible. So this is the, the running plan for the moment. It will be four years at the Z, two years at WW, three years at ZH, and five years at TT bar uh, for uh, luminosity, which would be uh, between 150 at inverse atom bar to 1.5 inverse atom bound for, for FCC uh, e at TT bar. But there is also this possible run at the Higgs pole to access the H uh, electron Yukawa coupling. And this has never been done before. It's, it's not clear that it's doable any, anywhere else at the moment. So important point is that for the Z and the W, uh, these uh, luminosity are 10 to the five times more than what you got at LEP and 2000 times more than what was done at LEP as well. And the other things were never done, of course, before. So detector requirements are crucial, and that's what we want to study now. Is the is the so the the, the requirements uh, bring a, 
constraints differently from the Higgs factory program, where there the important point is momentum resolution at this level, 2 10 to the minus 5 per GV square, per GV, and the jet energy resolution at the level of 30% uh, over square root of V in multi jet environment, and then also very good uh, B tagging performance. Heavy flavor program also has lots of constraints which come in here. The pi zero to gamma separation and the measurement for tau physics are important, and the k over pi separation is also crucial over a large uh, momentum range. And so this might be there might be a detector which will be uh, specialized in such such physics. The ultra precise electronic program will eventually be maybe the one which will bring the the, the strongest constraints since you need absolute normalization. Uh, down to 10 to the minus 4 and relative normalization down to 10 to the minus 5. Very good uh, momentum resolution uh, and also stability of the, of the magnetic field. And then the feebly coupled particle search means that you, you need the sensitivity to far detached vertices and also large decay length and so uh, extended detector volume and, uh, and a good hermeticity as well. So the detectors on the study for FCCE, at the moment, there are three of them for potentially four uh, area. So there is CLD, which is adapted from the, the click detector. And so it's a full silicon tracker with a two Tesla magnetic field, high granular silicon tank stand for the ECAL and a scintillator steel for HCAL with instrumented steel yoke with RPC fermion detection. IDEA is a detector which has been designed explicitly for circular colliders, it's valid both for uh, FCC and for uh, CPC. Uh, it has a silicon vertex and then a drift shaper, which is very light with very low uh, number of radiation length, and also then a, a magnet and a dual readout calorimeter, which can come in different flavors uh, with uh, either uh, scintillating fiber or with crystals. So, this really interesting options. There might be different options which should be explored in the future. And then recently, the new kid on the block is the, is the novel liquid. Uh, uh, calorimeter uh, because this was initially designed for FCCHH, but now that FCCE is the priority, uh, we are uh, designing such a concept with uh, higher granularity. And here, together with uh, the other part, it's a, it's a new a, a new detector concept which is being developed. So, as I said, there are other options like this uh, crystal calorimeter in the in the dual readout, which uh, Chris is around, so can talk about it if you want, and. Uh, uh, this is very active in the US and Italy, and there are also other places where there are lots of R&D that I will not discuss here. But for potentially for experiments and many complementary options, uh, which will be implemented, it's definitely a place to, to contribute. And at the moment, the contribution is not only at the R&D level, but also at really at the concept level. So there is also lots of uh, detailed simulations to be to be undertaken at the moment. For CPC, the situation is, uh, is similar. Okay, there are four uh, concepts which have been put forward. The baseline approach is a particle flow approach, so with very high granularity uh, calorimeters, and then a full uh, silicon tracker, uh, full silicon uh, tr yes, tracker concept here. Uh, then the idea that we were just mentioning, so which is really the same uh, carbon copy detector, and then a fourth. Uh, uh, concept with uh, crystal uh, in the, for the uh, electromagnetic calorimeter. Yeah. I conclude. So we're talking a bit about the physics that can be done because at the end of the day, that's uh, where we want to go. And really, there there is lots of potential. So for the Higgs, uh, we have uh, we will collect, as we said, more than a million ZH events and about 0.1 million of uh, w, I mean, uh, WW fusions. So it will bring additional uh, studies possible. And the nice thing, of course, in such a machine is that you can study the Higgs without looking at the Higgs just by this uh, uh, recoil mass approach. So you can model, make model independent measurements normalized to the E plus E minus uh, ZH cross section and do a fixed candle uh, H to ZZ measurements for which can then be propagated to FCCHH or to HL LHC previous results. The Higgs properties will be also studied in details, and will be all these measurements will be statistically limited, not systematically limited. And then there will be the Higgs self-coupling. I will I will show you a slide where we see that there is a complementarity with the HH machine, and then this unique possibility of trying to measure the Higgs to the electron coupling in the S channel, and also have a slide for that. So let's let's go directly to that. <laughs> First, the couplings. The couplings, when you put together uh, the 240 and 365 GV uh, run, you end up with the couplings here that you see at the percent level here. 
uh, AGZ, HWWW. So at the level of 0 0.2, 0 0.4%, 0 0.6%, slightly above 1% for the H2CC bar or X2 blue glue, but you have to take into account that this was done with two uh, detectors only. So with four detectors, you will be uh, for all these parameters below 1% for sure and close to 0.1% for some of them. Uh, so this is pretty impressive for CPC. As we said, it will be rather similar if it would, it would happen. And so there is really a, a huge potential in trying to see deviation in these couplings already uh, from, from the first uh, ZH run. Uh, note also that at the end of the day, uh, oh, gosh. at the end of the day, uh, for the mu mu, for the gamma gamma, or the, the TT bar at couplings to the Higgs, there the, the superiority of the high statistics uh, hadron machine will still be present. And so they will have to be used to, to get to the highest precision on, the, on these couplings. So now this is the, something very interesting as well is this. Uh, to try to measure the first generation Yukawa coupling. Uh, this will definitely not uh, uh, accessible at uh, Hadron Colliders. Uh, and it's the Higgs to decay is already inobservable because if you look at the branching ratio, it's at the level of 10 to the minus nine. And if you look into the mu mu machine, okay, you, there you have a high cross section, but you would address not, of course, not the first generation, you would address the second generation. So it's not the same, it's definitely very important. And if you put up the numbers, you see that with the avail the luminosity is available at FCC EE with 20 inverse atom bond per year, you could produce at the level about 30,000 uh, Higgses. And then if you can indeed control the beam energy spread, the initial state radiation and the backgrounds, then you can, you can get to that. But you need to know the energy of the beam very precisely. And so these are the studies which are being done. So these are the limits which are expected with uh, the previous machine and this you see you are really very far away still like 30 times the standard model with any any other approach with the FCCHH as well but with such an approach you could maybe get to two or three sigma or maybe more uh, on this uh, on this process which would be of course crucial to understand the standard model and the Higgs coupling uh, down to the first generation for the Higgs self-coupling uh, here you don't have access directly to Higgs, Higgs production because you are below the threshold but you can use the uh, interference and, uh, and the loop effects. And uh, so you have the variation of the cross section where as a function of the square root of the energy of the center of mass. So we, since you have a measurement at 240 and another one at 360, the variation of this, uh, of this cross section allows you to determine the size of the couplings in these diagrams. And with such an approach, you have, a, you have a, this, uh, this ellipse which comes out of the, the, between the two parameters uh, with the kappa lambda. And so with that, you can, with a, with a global fit, you can determine that kappa lambda can be determined at the 20% level uh, precision with four interaction points. So the 20% means close to the five sigma discovery. And so this would be the potentially the first observation of cell coupling. And I remind you that with HH, we will get down below 5%. So, but, but still it would be a very step forward because at the LHC, we, get, we hope to get to 50% sensitivity, maybe two to three sigma, but not definitely not to the discovery. Uh, even Both for uh, and here again, uh, we will see uh, we will produce uh, new studies of all the electroweak uh, precision observables. And what you see all the time is that the, the statistical error is very tiny at the level, for instance, of four MeV for the mass or four MeV for the the width of the Z. Uh, while the systematic at the moment are much higher. But these systematics are partly dominated by, uh, by uh, also by theoretical errors. So there will be at the same time work on, on theory and on uh, experimental techniques, 
which will be uh, available with the high statistics. And so eventually we will gain really uh, uh, huge factors on, on these on this variables. And uh, just another uh, last word also on flavor and tow factory. Here also the very high statistics will, will make FCC the next step after Bell. You will see you get a good gain of about an order of magnitude in terms of events. And so you see that, for instance, on, on the angle gamma, you get this uh, big step forward with FCCE and a big step forward also, in, for instance, in the VUBCKM parameters from 2.5% to 1%. So there will be also 10 to 11 tau decays which will be produced. So with a special detector and the study, we will definitely a lot of things to do also with the tau physics and also with, with QCD because we have so, so many events. With the top, I will also not have time to, to say, but just to say that we will be able to scan the threshold and so make uh, precise measurements of, of uh, uh, mass and width uh, at the level of 17 and 45 MBV. So it's really an order of magnitude from what we do at the moment uh, at, H at LHC. Uh, and we will be able also to extract the TTZ coupling, which is very important for the future uh, UK coupling at FCCHH. And the feebly interacting particles, again, they're also the statistics. So Aya is coming back now. Uh, the statistics uh, will also allow to extend uh, this, uh, the, 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 the search in terms of couplings versus uh, the mass of this uh, neutral particle uh, significantly. So let's uh, summarize. I mean, this is what I just said. So I will, since I'm lacking time, I, I let just a slide. I mean, we will do lots of physics that we just passed through very quickly. But the point is that to conclude is that we want to have a machine which is really broad and powerful uh, with high sensitivity, high precision, high energy. And I hope I convince you that Circular Collider is the right machine for that. Uh, the important point is that FCCE can be constructed at CERN while accomplishing the HL LHC program. And so this is a very strong point because people can really work simultaneously on the two programs while finishing HLHC. There are many opportunities and challenges which are offered by the energy range from the Z pole to 100 TV at the end. And so it's really important to try to join this effort now. And I put down some uh, workshop uh, next year, which are of interest and every, open to everybody, uh, can be joined by Zoom as well. And so it's, it's very important. Okay, thank you and sorry for the time. Okay, FCC has so much physics. It's <laughs> difficult to cover in 30 minutes. Uh, I could have listened for two hours for sure. <laughs> And an uh, unbiased so, view. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we need to schedule more time, maybe for FCC. For the, um, any questions or comments? We have little time, but yes. Uh, Gregory, I wonder what you what do you think about you know having two experiments versus four. You know how you know our experience from LEP versus you know the Tevatron and the LHC. What's the feeling on that? You know, of course, you know collecting as many events is important, but uh, I wondered, you know, with the cost issues versus the sort of role of physicists in the large experiments, whether there was a sort of uh, a thought about which direction that might go. Well, I mean, I mean, the statistic point is important and also the diversity because, of course, as we said, there is also, for instance, the heavy flavor program, which might need some really dedicated uh, PID detectors, which might not be optimal, fully optimal, let's say, for a week and so on and so forth. Yeah. So from this point of view, still having the four detectors, I think, would be a, would be a plus. And given the amount of physics, uh, I think it it would fit with the e plus e minus. For the HH is not the plan. For the HH, indeed, we plan to go back to the the same like uh, LHC yeah? to have two detectors because there indeed people will have bigger detectors and probably more people on the techniques. But otherwise, I think we will still do try the four. Yeah? Okay, we have two more questions. One was over there, and one is down here. Sorry. So uh, the CEPC timeline looks very aggressive. I mean, if we uh, do that, you know, by 2030, if we <clears throat> think about uh, producing Higgs there, um, I mean, do you need to have um, more justification to support FCC type of machine at CERN? 
uh, if CPC is built because it's considerable cost is involved. Uh, I'm not fully understand. What, what do you propose? Yeah. Yes, you said CPC is more aggressive. Yeah, yeah I think the CP, CPC timeline yeah. is very aggressive, yeah. right? So what, I mean, what should we do at CERN? So I yeah, I mean, for FCCE type of machine, and I'm sure a lot of physics can be done at CPC as mm -hmm. well, that FCCE is proposing. So the question is, uh, I mean, do we need to think beyond what CPC is going to provide in terms of the physics output? Well, as I said, I mean, potentially CPC would do similar physics. The point is that in terms, let's say, uh, the way the, the program is set, I mean, there is, no, there is no lab in China for doing this physics right at the moment. You need to build a lab. I mean, at CERN, we have a lab, we have the infrastructure, we have the collaboration, the global collaboration. You see, in terms of global collaboration uh, for China, it's going to be quite difficult to bring up a global collaboration. Uh, it's not easy at the moment. And so, although potentially CPC should arrive earlier if to get the funding, but the funding will come essentially from China. So it is a real decision, a single man decision, basically. Uh, well, let's see what happens. But uh, in my opinion, I think we are in pretty good shape with uh, building a global collaboration as we are. And that's the, actually, that's also just comment with respect to ILC. ILC maybe didn't start enough with the global collaboration. Of course, now it went, then it went global, but this project is really a global project uh, from the start, yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, one more question, and then we have to move on, I think. Um, we have more? Oh, sorry. The answer to his question, I wanted ah, to I'll complete to sorry. that, that yeah. for CPC, sorry. the first thing is that it's right now not clear whether it will be included in the next five-year plan of China, which is going to be decided within a few years, one few months. So the point is that whether CEPC is going to be on the horizon or not will actually become clearer much before any challenges uh, are uh, even uh, raised. So I, I think we'll all be happy if CEPC comes. And the other point is in uh, actually relation to question you asked. As far as I know, CEPC right now doesn't even have complete design for two interaction points, but they uh, can allow for it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the, uh, because you're asking about point. two versus four. For four, yeah. At so the moment, they are four. Two, yeah. I will add a comparative statement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, one, we take one more question. Yeah, uh, so Gregorio, thank you for the nice overview. Um, so I was just wondering, the, you talked about this 30% uh, energy resolution at the Z uh, Higgs scale, I think, uh, for the for the digit. Mm -hmm. And is it with this uh, double readout system or is it just the lead tungsten one? I'm sorry, I'm No, no, the, 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 the digit uh, resolution yes. that you talked about is, is around 30% or so. Yeah. So I was just wondering whether it's the, with the dual readout system or or with the lead tungsten one that you proposed for? Uh, well, I mean, that's this is a, the constraint that we, we need to be reached, yeah? This is the, I mean, for instance, for liquid argon, calorimeter should be able to reach, but the dual readout is also done in a way to compensate, I mean, to do compensation for electron anhydron. So in principle, it should be able to reach such a, such a, a resolution. So I don't know if you have the numbers, but I don't know the numbers of dual readout for, yeah, so, yeah. yeah it's a, it's a bit better, but it's, it's, bit. it's around the same. Yeah, it's about that now. But I do recommend for the liquid argon that uh, a similar uh, particle flow algorithm development is made because I think the current ones don't apply to um, the cryogenic and the crystal type approaches as opposed to these yeah. so called tracking calorimeters. But it makes a big gain in the end. Okay, we, we have to. Sorry, thank you again. We have to move on. The last speaker.